What is tesamorelin? It's a growth hormone secreting peptide. Sure, I get it. That doesn't tell you much of anything. So that's why we're here today. Now let's dig deep into it. A little history about tesamorelin. Okay, so tesamorelin was originally FDA approved in, I believe, 2009. And it was under the brand name drug called egrifta. Now, egrifta was FDA approved for the treatment of lipodystrophy in patients that have HIV. Now, if you're not familiar with lipodystrophy, that's a condition where the anti retroviral drugs, the actual drugs used to treat HIV, those drugs can induce a redistribution of body fat centrally. In other words, you start retaining a lot of body, body fat in your visceral region, in your abdomen, so that's why we call it centrally, and it starts thinning out peripherally. Your limbs, your arms, legs get a little bit skinnier. So tesamorlin was FDA approved to treat that condition because Tessamorlin is very, very good at reducing adipose body fat. Now, Tessamorlin works by binding the pituitary gland, and then it stimulates the increased endogenous production of growth hormone. The benefits of increasing growth hormone, well, I just mentioned one of them, was that there will be a mobilization and increased utilization of that central body fat. Therefore, you will reduce some adipose tissue in the abdomen area. Studies have been shown that tesamorlin can actually improve fatty liver disease, which is an accumulation of fat, triglycerides, and metabolic syndrome etiologies combined, which affect the liver. Also, increasing growth hormone is going to increase the depth of your sleep, the restorative benefits of your sleep. It's going to improve how fast you recover. So you work out hard, you're less sore, you're less sore for less days. Joints are going to hurt less. Skin's going to grow faster. Hair's going to grow faster. In other words, you're overall just going to increase your healing and regenerative properties. So about dosing, dosing is a little interesting because for treating patients with lipodystrophy that are on HIV antiretroviral meds, the dosing is suggested to be in the ballpark of 1.4 milligrams sub Q once daily. However, in otherwise healthy people who are just using it to augment their GH production, dosing can be much less than that. It can be 500 micrograms a day, 750 micrograms a day. It can be even one milligram a day. So you're probably wondering why would the FDA dose be 1.4 milligrams a day, but you can get away with lower doses as a compound? Why would that be? Well, it, I've spoken to several compound pharmacists and we're kind of in the same boat, them and I, in the sense that those drugs were FDA approved for someone on HIV meds who had HIV lipodystrophy. So they had a condition that required a much, much higher dosage. However, we can extrapolate that if you're an otherwise healthy guy who just makes an underwhelming amount of GH, you can get away with less. And quite frankly, I've even seen the IGF-1 levels of people who are on tesamorlin pre and post, and they can make a substantial increase in their, their IGF-1 production, as well as a substantial improvement of their symptoms of having low GH. So lastly, what would be the expectations of tesamorlin? So just like any other growth hormone secretagogue, like CJC or like ipamorlin or hexarelin, sermorlin, whatever, any of them, just like any of those, these GH secretagogues are not, I repeat, they are not fast acting. You must be patient when you use these medications. If you want to get a good substantial amount of efficacy out them. So with that being said, give it at least six ish weeks before you start noticing anything. And if you notice something, most likely the first benefit that you will actually appreciate will be that you'll notice that you actually get deeper, more restorative sleep. Now to get the full amalgamation of benefits, the recovery, the regenerative, the et cetera, et cetera, those types of things, you're looking at least minimally three to four ish months before you can actually notice some tangible degree of benefit. So again, patience is the key when it comes to using these peptides. Hope you found this video informative. Give us a subscription. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit us up. Look forward to it. Thanks.